Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Now that we have had some time to play with the Audio Apocalypse miniset, it's a good time to evaluate, okay, how good has this miniset been? Has this miniset reached the goals that Blizzard had set to it? And for this work we have unique resource this time that we haven't had with any of the other minisets, because Leo Robles, who was the lead designer of this miniset, made a big thread detailing every card and his expectations about the card, so Big thanks to Leo about this information. Obviously, this makes Leo quite vulnerable because now everyone like me can criticize him. Ah, you don't understand anything. But on the other hand, it also allows Leo to get some credit for when he's right on the mark when things happen exactly as expected. Obviously, we cannot completely evaluate the audio apocalypse yet. As I have said before in other videos about minisets, minisets tend to also include cards that only become relevant much later. And that has actually been one of the weaknesses of minisets often, that the immediate impact is limited and then there's going to be much more impact later on, multiple expansions on, maybe even sometimes a year later. But Audio Apocalypse actually was quite strong in the current meta, many of the cards buffed the current archetypes, and there was quite little support for new stuff in Audio Apocalypse. So in Audio Apocalypse probably a lot of the stuff is like we see it already. So what did Leo think about Audio Apocalypse cards before players got wide access to them? Because this thread is from May 25th, right before the release. And first card, Remix Tuning Fork. The first of the remix cycle. These cards have red, powerful effects, but you don't know which version you're going to get. When drawn at the end of your turn, it transforms into one of the four subforms, making each turn feel different. Yeah. Remix cards are pretty rad, and those effects are quite strong. They add some unpredictability, more unpredictability to Hearthstone. And Tuning Fork, Tuning Fork is not used in Enrage Warrior, because Enrage Warrior already has a weapon. Tuning Fork is used in some of the better versions of Menagerie Warrior. Those are just doing a little bit too poorly at the moment, but Tuning Fork does look like a pretty good card. Then we have True Fell and Flames. Dual class, yeah! Dual class cards are back, this time with brand new class pairings. This card started as a Paladin card in the main set, but got cut for more important pieces, and we still like the card and felt it was just a sweet in Warrior slash Demon Hunter. Well, True Fell and Flames never still any play in Warrior, and in Demon Hunter it re enabled Spell Demon Hunter, it re enabled Lady Steno combos, resulting in Lady Steno getting nerfed herself and finally eliminating those combos. So, this was probably a bit of a miss putting this in Warrior TH, because Demon Hunter with this card just warranted another nerf. So, yeah, it does fit thematically into the current Demon Hunter but that Steno combo was just a bit too strong. Then Abyssal Basist. Dual class cards are tricky. They should feel right in either class, but are coolest when they give classes things outside their identity. Warrior getting life steal, but being Demon Hunter justifies that. Being a weapon card helps make it feel like both classes. In practice, Demon Hunter has not had enough weapons to use Abyssal Basist, maybe in the future though, but Warrior does, specifically in Menagerie, and Abyssal Basist has looked like a pretty decent card, hasn't really gotten mainstream adoption, but definitely an interesting addition to the game. Grim Totem Bus Skill. We struggled for a bit with a story for the miniset. When brainstorming, we looked at what the main set was missing. Conflict. The Grim Totem, Nadim 2000 Needles, hate how long the festival's gone on, want to destroy discard music instruments. Well, cry discard a weapon to draw three cards. This card is probably a bit of a miss. Leo explains the thematic here, but you just don't have so many weapons that you could afford to really discard them. That kind of deck does not exist. Elite Torrent Champion. With the fate of music at stake, ETC has picked up his guitar to save the festival. We wanted a super over-the-top effect for this card, and a musically rocking hot potato fit the bill perfectly. Yeah, it, it is, it's a fun card, but it's not, not really playable. Magatha, Bane of Music. The Grim Totem want to destroy all of music, and we wanted to find ways to let them do that. Buskill discards instruments, and Magatha here hates music, spells, so much that she doesn't want anything to do with them. Magatha is one of the bigger hits of the expansion. Thematically, it just works, and it's also a powerful card, so well done. Well done with this one. Speaker Stomper. We hate spells, every Grim Totem Torrent ever. 
I can't remember when this specific design started or came from, but it's dope. And tradable helps make this type of effect feel so much nicer. Cranium spells cost two more next turn, but it costs four to play this card. And that is a little bit too much for that kind of disruptive battle cry effect, so Speaker Stomper doesn't see any play. Remixed Musician, another one for the remix cycle. This one serves as a simple introduction to what cycle does. Also, Cathedral Musician has some of my favorite voiceover of any card ever. No exaggeration. So 3-3 three, three with Rush plus something. It seems like a pretty decent card, but it just hasn't found any place. I mean, it's, it's a bit too fair, I suppose. Hidden meaning. One thing we try to do with every mini set is see what the keyword plus plus looks like from the main set, like how Dead Mines had tradable triggers. We found the coolest way to expand on Finale's gameplay was through individual Finale like designs, like ETC or Hidden Meaning. Then in Hunter Secret, when the opponent ends their turn with no mana, summon a random tree ghost minion. This card has been right on the spot. Thematically, it works, and it's also just just the right power level. It's strong enough to see play, but it's not overpowering, so yeah, that was a good one. Yelling Yodeler. I see lots of comments about how Hunter plus DK is a strange mix. The fantasy of dual class in the miniset is that ETC asks all festival goers to band together rather than compete to take down Magatha, resulting in more than one weird and wacky class pairings. Yelling Yodeler, Battlecry trigger friendly minions death rattle twice, has seen some play in some combo attempts, potentially a card that can break the game but it didn't break the game in this expansion. Then Hollow Hound. This is one of my personal favorite cards from this set. Hunter's class identity makes it near impossible for them to get good healing, which funnily enough is what their slower Big Beast deck wants. Since this is also a DK card, we can give them Lifesteal card. Yeah, that is, that is powerful. That's powerful, it works thematically, it's exactly what Big Beast Hunter needs. This miniset really enabled more defensive strategies for Hunter, which had not existed before, and I think that's pretty exciting. Dead Air, a cool piece for any deck that runs Dead Rattles, Reborn Minions, or just wants a lot of corpses. Destroy Undead and resummon them. Has seen combo uses, at two mana cheap enough to be used in combo ways, but other than that, just no. Ghoul Ghoul. With each release, we talk a lot about complexity budget. There's a limit to how complex we want the set to be. The Remix Cycle plus ETC use a lot of the complexity budget for the set. We looked for ways to make fun but simple cards like this one as much as we could. Omena 3 1 Divine Shield Reborn. Just a bit too slow. A bit too slow to really see play. Gold Feet. We matched Paladin and DK for the lower flavor reasons since the Lich King was a Paladin before. That's good insight. That said, finding design overlap between them was tricky. We figured giving Paladin a Frost spell would be neat, and the design is similar to Rebuke, an old Paladin spell. Any minions cost 5 more next turn, but... Like, usually you want to make spells cost more, because you want to play this kind of disruptive cards in aggressive strategies, and spells are then the stuff that's going to clear your board. So Cold Feet really doesn't have any... it doesn't really do anything, so it doesn't see any play. Dance floor. The light bends to my sweet moves. Give you a minion's rush. Mainly used in Dancing Paladin with Kangor, because, well, Kangor is just so, so incredibly strong, and you just want to do Kangor things, and this enables you to do that when you can find Kangor. Other than that, doesn't really have much of a use. Jukebox Totem. A dual class totem is fun, because we get to ask how would a totem look like in X class. Totems have such distinct gameplay, but only really show up in Shaman. With the menagerie implications of either the Purator or one amalgam band, getting a good totem is rad. Except that this time it, it really wasn't. 2 mana 0, 4, okay, it summons 1 ones, those Silverhand recruits, you don't have that many decks that make really use of the Silverhand recruit synergies, Shaman can't really make use of that synergy, totem itself has no attack, it's just... It's much less intimidating than like a stereo totem that buffs your hand, so Jukebox totem just doesn't doesn't see play. Then Horn of the Wind Lord, and this is an interesting one. What did Leo think of Horn of the Wind Lord compared to now when we know what Horn of the Wind Lord actually does? Shaman is the class that uses Wind Fury the most, and the Paladin loves changing the stats of minions. Slap both of those on the weapon and bam, you've got a great control tool with Doomhammer levels of burst. Yeah, Doomhammer levels of burst certainly were realized in Paladin. So I guess they kind of knew what they were doing. 
just the tuning was maybe a bit off and Horn of the Wind Lord turned out to be really powerful with the current Paladin spell pool, which they have since tried to address with Nerfed Feast and Famine. Remix Totem Carver. We found that the remix cycle is the most fun when the outcomes are varied, but with a true line. Totem Carver always comes with a good totem, but each one is so different from the other with their effects. Yeah, that's that's fine, and Totem Carver is a fine card. And it's good that there's no individual like super bad outcome. Jam Session. Warrior wants another fire spell. Shaman wants another Overload card. Boom, Jam Session. Well, it definitely worked for Warrior. Not just the fire aspect, but also the deal one damage to all other minions aspect was super important, making Jam Session one of the best cards in the mini set. Shaman wants another Overload card. Well, Overload Shaman still sucks, so it didn't actually do anything for Shaman. I'm actually a little concerned that Overload Shaman is just an unsalvageable concept. They would have to buff it so hard that that it would be totally crazy to make it work. Backstage Bouncer. After we decided on class pairings, we jotted down to rough ideas for how those pairs can share cards. My favorite was Warrior Shaman, Frog Taunt. <laughs> the outcome is a taunt minion that hexes another minion into a frog. A powerful card, and okay, I do like the concept as well. Remix Dispenser Bot. This card says get X instead of add X to your hand, but it's functionally the same thing. Why did we use this wording? Because it's shorter. It might not seem like much, but shaving of three words opens up some space for cooler designs in the future. Mm, that's great, because this Benzobot didn't really work. They even buffed it and it still doesn't. Star Power. We made Arcane Hunter in March of the Lich King, and it didn't land as well as we wanted. Yeah, we can tell. Luckily, printing support for it is easy. Just make damaging Arcane spells. That is true as well. Since they're sharing a card with Mage, this was a good opportunity to print a solid removal piece for Hunter and Mage. Well, that is an exact correct prediction. Star Power is indeed a solid card. It does see play. It improved Arcane Hunter. I mean, it did what they wanted it to do. Costumed Singer. A shared design space between Mage and Hunter is secrets, something only a few classes have. Thing is, Mage and Hunter secrets have different costs, so we couldn't make an actual secret. This design serves the same strong purpose in either class. And yeah, it actually sees play in both classes, so... This one also did exactly what they wanted it to do. One Hit Wonder, a new strong combo card for Rogue. I also really liked flavor on this card. Rush, Combo Cane, Poisonous. It's not the right meta for Maybe there is a meta for this, but I don't know if there really is. It just doesn't see play. Defen, Brain Freeze was one of my favorite dual class cards from Scholomance, since it felt like a reasonable card in either class, but also gave each class something they never get. This card is like that, but with a priest spin of silence instead of freeze. Mm, thing is, silence isn't that valuable in the current meta, and when it is, then priest already has access to mass silence, which is far, far better. And rope has other tools too, so this one didn't really end up seeing play. Age Riser. Rogues love to purgle, but not usually directly from the opponent's cards. Priest does that, so now rogue can too. And Priest doesn't usually get pirates, but Rogue does. Also, I'm personally very proud of the name I gave this card. Yeah, it just... I would love to see it work, but it just doesn't like it. Pirate, so it gives like Menagerie Priest some tools potentially, but... 3 mana fall tree is such a, such a poor spot stat-wise, because 2 drops trade into it, most weapons trade into it, so it just doesn't have the staying power. Remix Rhapsody. Playtest game feedback that changes each turn was confusing on other Remix cards since set that while in play, yet only changes in hand. We couldn't that while in hand because of Emotional's text box, so instead that whole clause disappears while in play. Alright, not much story about what this was supposed to do. So far it doesn't seem to do that much, but it has some potential. Tough crowd. A sap in Demon Hunter? Yep. Except this is, I think, the first time since Kidnapper that it's flexible. Bounce an enemy threat or a friendly powerhouse. But 3 mana for a sap effect and also outcast, it's its too much. You, you just can't fulfill the criteria. Rhythm Dancer Risa. I can see that they were excited about this card. Of course, with dual class returning, we had to have a dual class legendary. Risa is great since both Rogue and DH attack with their heroes constantly, but in meaningfully different ways. She feels super fluid to play in either class. This this is really a bit weird one because she does not feel super fluid at all. Even after the buff, she is not very good. So, yeah, that that was a bit of a miss. 
Hope you'll have Pixie. The Hero Power Package in Druid is super exciting and fresh. Naturally, we had to give them an extra support piece in the mini set for those that want to go all in on Punch Druid. Doesn't currently see play. Blood Tree and Druid Warlock is maybe my personal favorite class pairing this time. Both classes are so different, which actually helped a lot to inform interesting card designs. Blood Tree is both the first collectible tree and, and the first collectible health cost card. But it costs too much, so you can't actually play with it. Doomkin. Normally we would never give Warlock ramp or give Druid something so disruptive. But it's a Druid and Warlock card. We can let Druid be mean because it's ramp and we can let Warlock ramp because it's mean. Yeah. Doomkin, Doomkin currently sees play. It is played in Thaddeus Druid. And what Doomkin does is it has really good performance when you play it on 6. And it sucks when you don't. So I really actually dislike this design because it's very polarizing. Hey, it can be good, but it can also be totally worthless. And it has a very narrow window for being good. If you compare this to any like strong early game card, well, strong early game cards, you mulligan for them. So you have tried to all chances to get them in time. And then they can still be useful in later game because they don't cost very much. So you can put them in when you do other stuff. But Doomkin, you just can't. So it just, it either is there when you need it or it isn't. Ambient Light Spawn, more overheal support. I personally love seeing input keywords combined like this. Valkyrie and Death Rattle is Pog. And combining the two new keywords worked super well. I really wanted this to work. I tried to make this work. I played with this card a lot, but it just sucks. It's too expensive. It just doesn't, it just doesn't get the job done. Funnel Cake. Funnel Cake finally gets its own card. This originally costed more mana, but healed all friendly characters, and ah, uh, well, it no longer does that. Yeah, she's playing wild. Fanboy. In the spirit of dual class, this guy simply can't root for just one band. His choose one options are filling in Zock Rocks for Rush and Poison Bloom for Lifesteal. She's play in Druid. Also, potentially could see play if there was some kind of... some kind of swarmy... Priest deck that didn't want either Undead or Menagerie. If this had a tribal tag, this could also see play in Priest, but right now it's it's kind of like Druid Mishmash Washer combo card, and that's pretty much it. It could have potential for more, but the importance of tribal tags right now means that it's a little bit handicapped. Phanotem, Lord of the Opera, the most expensive card we've ever printed. Phanotem's text work came about pretty early in the process, and despite not having a ton of direct synergy currently, we loved this text box so much that we kept it. I wonder if this implies that there would be more synergy later on, because this really, really doesn't have a lot right now, and it's it's unplayable. But before the characters locked in, we did try this as a demon, Phanotem as a demon. The Age of Despair became pretty good. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that's why no demon tag. Then Fiddlefire Imp. They also tried to buff this card. Warlock Mage is an interesting pairing, and a bit tricky to design since the classes can be so similar. So let's literally give them access to something they don't get, cards from the other class. And yeah, Fiddlefire Imp's real strength is those random spells, but it costs too much, you can't weave them into your turns, they typically cost like 4 mana, so that would be at 7 mana you play a small minion and you get a spell, and, and that just doesn't do it. So Fiddlefire Imp sadly doesn't really work. Reverberations. The goal here was to make one of Shadow Spell for Warlock Mage. The result? A really interesting half removal, half summoning spell. Mage's strength at summoning minions via spell spared surprisingly nicely with Warlock's grim style of removal. Yeah, it, it also just doesn't really work. So that was all of the cards from Audio Apocalypse and the designer's thoughts about those cards before we actually got to play with them. And what can I say about that? They got a lot of stuff right. There were a few things that they got really, really wrong, like True Fell and Flames, for example. And it appears that they were attempting to support many of the current archetypes, and they were not really trying to lift archetypes, like, let's say, Agro Druid, for example, or Menagerie Priest. They could have tweaked these cards to give support to those classes. I mean, the Treant, Fanboy, a bit different design on those could have could have tried to support some different archetypes, but those clearly were not even the design intention. And also the remaining balance patches, so that those were not the design intention. They have not worked on promoting any of those archetypes. So I think overall, Audio Apocalypse did do quite a bit of the things that Blizzard intended it to do. Many of the cards that they thought were going to be strong were strong. 
some that they thought just failed. I mean, the Inizet kind of failed with Rogue especially. Rogue cards were much weaker than they had anticipated. And then it enabled that Spell Demon Hunter again, which they also didn't anticipate. Some of that has been fixed with balance patches, but stuff like Rogue and Warlock actually also sucking has not. So a bit of hit and miss. Some things did land like they wanted them to, some things failed. Overall, not a terrible mini set, and it was also exciting to see what they really thought it was going to be like compared to what it actually turned out to be. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.